hear our declaration today as we hear from the Lord. Let's go. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. You can have your seats. I want to take this opportunity to thank God for this opportunity that he has given unto us and to me that we may hit the word together for us to grow. I want to thank the management of the uh, ministry, our bishop and his family, for the, this divine opportunity uh, that we may feed and eat together. I want to thank God. Let us bow our heads and give God honor. Father, we thank you for this day. We want to agree with the scriptures that this is the day that you have meant we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you because that is done. We speak the blood of Jesus upon this place and its house cuts. In the name of Jesus Christ, dear Lord, take preeminence, reign, rule, speak to us, Lord, instruct us, Lord, rebuke us, Lord, and bless our lives. Thank you for your word. We have come with receptive hearts. Lord, have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, we thank God for this day that he has given us that we may hear his, his word. We are here to worship God. We are here to grow, in, to grow up into Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Therefore, uh, in the month, we've been directed by the Spirit uh, to learn about growth into Christ Jesus. And in the pursuit of this growth, today uh, the Lord wants us to look on power of choice. Our subtitle today, under growing up into Christ Jesus, is power of choice. You have to choose who you want to be. Do you want to grow? Do you want not to grow? You have to choose. There is no option under the sun, but merely choosing. Indeed, we are the results of our choices. What we have chose, what we chose is what we have today. How we are growing is based on our choice that we've chosen on this earth. I want us to look in Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 15. As we look into these scriptures, I want to welcome everyone who is viewing. You are most welcomed. Uh, I want to agree with you that this is not a waste of time. We are going to be blessed of the Lord. I'm much optimistic that we are going to be blessed. No other thing. We are going to grow into Christ Jesus. Just hold on there and let's move together in the name of Jesus Christ. This is a youth service. Might you be a youth there or not? The word of God is a cross. We are all welcomed. Welcome. Therefore, we are reading Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 15. That is our base reading. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15 to verse 20. We can go together. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and life. In that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments, his statutes and his judgments, that you may live and multiply. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you go to possess. But if your heart turns away, so that you do not hear and are drawn away 
and worship other gods and serve them. I announce to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not prolong your days in the land which you cross over the Jordan to go in and possess. I call heaven and have witness, witnesses today against you that, I'm, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both you and your descendants may live. That you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, and that you may cling to him, for he is your life and the length of your days, and that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, to give them. Next. Yes, uh, it's there. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I want to say this in, in the concept of growing in Christ Jesus. We have to choose if we want to grow or not. If you can correlate it with today's life, the daily life that we live. Let's take, for example, uh, our life of heating. We heat to live. We don't just heat, but we are advised as a best practice to heat a balanced diet. It's logically, if you don't heat, you will die. True or false? So, it is important for us to heat and heat a well balanced diet. This is physical. The same can be applied in the spiritual. If we don't feed spiritually, we will also die. I think there is a scripture that says in the in the Bible that some of us are dead walking. Are walking dead because they have not been fed spiritually. We've been told that growing to Christ Jesus is grand to us. It's a process. So, it is based on the choice. You have to choose on how to live, on what to eat and what to eat. Therefore, in the purpose of choice, there is growth. You choose to pursue in this career, you grow in that profession. You choose to live this kind of life, evil, you grow wicked. You choose to live a righteous life, you grow with life and life in eternal. This means that we can decide where we want to go in life. It means that you can choose to do what matters. As a youth, as a mature Christian, you can choose where you want to go. You can choose what matters in your life. It means you can bring forth your incredible spiritual growth in Christ Jesus. Growth. God chose love God chose to love us first. For so God loved the world. The world is me and you. The result that we may not perish. That's a choice. It began with God. Therefore, it is paramount in our lives, in our Christian lives, to choose wisely. That's why the Bible says, Those who do not have wisdom, let them ask. And the Lord will give them wisdom. My fellow Christians, I want to put it clearly to you. There is no shortcut. Whatever you want to live, you have to choose. And how you live, it's a result. There is nothing without result. If you live to choose evil, you will live 
wicked. And the Bible says, those who do not believe, they will perish. I want to encourage someone today that we may choose to love God for us to grow into Christ Jesus. There is no way we can grow into Christ Jesus unless we have chosen life. In the scriptures that we've read, in verse 19, the scripture, my Bible tells me that we've been given a free will to choose life and death. But for us who are confused, there has been a proposal, a wise proposal. In verse 19, B part, the Bible says, I therefore, I, I therefore choose life. Therefore choose life, that both of you and thy seed may live. The choice that we choose is not for us only. It's even for our line of, of uh, our generation. The choice that I've made will affect my descendants in one or another way. What does it mean? Choosing is very important in life. A country goes the way the leaders have chosen. Unless the spiritual realm in Christianity is awake. So we have to be wise. Why? Because there is power in choice. You want to live well? Choose Jesus Christ. The Bible, it has been suggested for us. Uh, I advise you that between life and death, choose life. Choose life. Between life and death, choose life. Uh, uh, why does God give us a choice? God gives us a choice, a free choice and free will to live our lives the way we desire. It is our, it's your own discretion. It's your own disposal to live the way you want. But now, remember, there are consequences. There are results. God wants us to choose because we love him and want to obey him, to make our decision within the overall blueprint of his will. When we are making our choices, the Bible suggests us the best practice. We choose our choices based on the will of God. We must choose our choices based on the will of God. It is the Holy Spirit who can guide us when we are choosing. Even as we have this freedom, you see, where there is freedom, it may be abused. Of course, it is abused, right? Where there are freedom, people abuse the freedom. But the Holy Spirit helps us to choose. Because there is power in choice, God did not leave us as orphans. He gave us the Holy Spirit. Then the Holy Spirit helps us to choose. Brethren, you are listening to me. I heard you today. For you to grow up into Christ Jesus, you must grow down in yourself. That's why the scriptures say, we must decrease. That the Lord will increase in our lives. That's a choice. I choose to decrease in the Lord that I may increase in him. In the concept of increasing, that is growth. Who doesn't want to grow? People are growing in two ways because we have two kingdoms. The kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. Most of us are growing in the kingdom of darkness because the Bible says the way is broad. And the broad way means there is population. The Bible says again, the way is narrow to go to heaven. So that means we many people are growing on the other kingdom. I heard you today. It is more important to grow in the best way, in the narrow way. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. What the Bible says about freedom of choice. Uh, only 
do not use your freedom as, a, as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. The Bible makes it clear we not only have the ability to choose, we also have the responsibility to choose wisely. James chapter 1 and verse 5. Give me James chapter 1 and verse 5. I repeat again. In the aspect of freedom as a, an opportunity, we do not have to grow in flesh, but through love, serving one another. The Bible makes it clear that we have the ability to choose. Everyone has the ability to choose. We also have this responsibility to choose wisely. In James chapter 1 verse 5, If when any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives to her liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Do you have some confusions? Because in the aspect of growing to Christ Jesus, the enemy brings confusion. The Bible says this is the solution. If any one of you lacks the ability to choose wisely, let him ask God. And God who gives to all liberally, will, he will also give you. He will also give me. So, there is no choice to choose unwisely. Brethren, there is no choice to choose unwisely. In the name of Jesus, God is so merciful. God is so gracious. God is so, do I say, philanthropic. God is so good. He has given us every solution in this life, this life, in the process of choosing. Do you not have wisdom? It is written. Let you ask, and God will give it liberally. God is not a man to lie. Neither is God a man to repent. For what he has said, he shall do it. O oh God, give me wisdom. Give me wisdom, O oh God. Give them wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ. That they may choose not only choosing, but choose wisely in the name of Jesus Christ. Why does God want us to have wisdom? Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10, quickly. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10. God wants us to have wisdom because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So we choose the fear of the Lord, humility. Brethren, Let's choose humility, the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is be the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. When we pray God, He will give us liberally, freely, wisdom. He who gives this wisdom in His knowledge, it will give us understanding. When you understand something, you choose it wisely. An illustration of an exam. When you are doing an exam and you understand, you will choose the correct answer. And by choosing the correct answer, the power of choice will be manifested because you will pass the test. Brethren, we have to pass the test because we are going to choose wisely. In the name of Jesus, spirits of confusion and unwise choosing we refuse them today. We are going to choose wisely. We shall not regret in future. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because we are growing into Christ Jesus. Because we are choosing wisely. In the name of Jesus Christ. Someone said, The strongest, the strongest principle of growth lies in human choice. The strongest principle of growth lies in human choice. God tells us to love him and love others. He gives us the freedom to choose. Brethren, I said it's on your own discretion, but you've been given a choice to choose life. You may choose to obey God or not. The consequences will come. 
you may choose him or reject him. The choice will be yours. You may choose to walk on his will or not. The choice is yours. But God says in Deuteronomy, I direct you, I advise you to choose life in the name of Jesus. Joshua chapter 24 and verse 15. Let's see this gentleman who was an hero, who was a champion in his grace. He purposed to choose. And if it seems evil to you, Joshua 24 verse 15, and if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day. I am speaking to you now. Let's uh, say I am Joshua. Because I myself, I ask God to help me to choose wisely. Therefore, I am speaking to you now. And if it seems evil to you, you now serve the Lord. To serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Hamorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Praise the Lord. This man purposed in the midst of the multitude, in the midst of the, 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 the today's life then. Him himself, he chose to serve the Lord. Brethren, humility. Let's fear the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Power in choice. Do you want to live well? Do you want uh, to excel? Do you want to grow? Let you choose to serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, Revelation, Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. The Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. Father, we thank you because you have enlightened your word for us. Beyond, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears, you have to hear, my voice and opens the door. Between hearing and opening the door, you have to choose. Do I open the door or not? Brethren, let's open the door. I will come in and dine with you. And I will be with you. Brethren, there is power in choice. If you want to see someone striving, is a someone who is dining with the Lord. Is someone who has chosen to dine with the Lord. As I said, God gives us the choice to walk in his will. Or walk in our own will. It's either here or be. God gave us free will. The ability to choose our own path. Wise or unwise. The truth is that we all take the wrong path from time to time. At any given time, we've fallen victim of unwise choosing. Then you say, I wish I did this. I wish I did that. I pray from today that the Holy Spirit of God, we've seen that the Holy Spirit of God will help us in making our choices. I pray that the Holy Spirit of God will help us to choose wisely. If you have ever fallen a victim, if you are being trapped, if the results are now uh, uh, giving you a time because of a choice that you've made, made I concluded to say, do not lose hope. Though if you've fallen into a pattern of sin, into a pattern of wrong choices, and are living in the reality of tough consequences, God gives us a way out of temptation and new masses each every morning. God is merciful. One way the devil uses to bring Christian down to curb their growth is contamination. What you used to do when you are not being saved, it's still speaking in your mind. When you want to pray, when you want to fast, when you want to grow, when you want to go forward, something comes in your mind and tells you, remember, we shall not live into condemnation. Because the Bible says, the one whom he sets free is free indeed. In the name of Jesus, because we have chosen life, Brethren, we are living a free life. 
Let's march forward. Let's love the Lord. Let's serve the Lord. There are many, I can say, there are many, I don't know how to call them vacancies. The Bible says, in the vineyard of the Father, the harvest is large. But those who to work there are not there. That means I have no, uh, I have no mind. I have no word to say I have nothing to do. It's just for me to choose. Brethren, let's choose. There is power in choice. Do you want to grow? The Bible says we shall know them by their, by their fruits. This is the result of the choice that they made. Therefore, let's read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. We are going to read, we've read uh, multiple of scriptures. We are going to read more. In the name of Jesus Christ, as we conclude. They say a good concluder in preaching concludes many times. So we are also concluding shortly. Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. No condemnation has overtaken you except such is common to man. But God is faithful. Have you found yourself having chosen and waste unwisely? I want to tell you, you are not alone in this race. Let's encourage ourselves. We've said we can choose to love by serving one another. Let's encourage ourselves. I want to say this. God is faithful. Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able? But with temptation, you will also make the way of escape. That you may be able to bear it. Say amen. Even though there are challenges which might make you to choose wrong, eh? God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you cannot do. This is the scriptures, not me. But with the temptation, he will make a way of escape. What is our purpose? Let's just love the Lord. Let's choose to love the Lord. Let's choose to serve him. Because there is power, and the power is God is faithful. God will make a way of escape for you, that you may be able to bear it in Jesus' name. So, I want to say, there is hope. Have we chosen unwisely at times? Every one of us has almost fallen a victim. There is hope, brethren. Because Lamentation chapter 3, verse 22, it says, It is the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, but his compassions fail not. Some illustrations in the Bible of people who chose well. Nehemiah fasted and prayed of, after getting a bad report before giving up a good position to serve God. We see this in Nehemiah 1 4. Abigail ignored her husband and fed King David and his men. We see this in 1 Samuel 25. Jairus believed and chose Jesus could heal his dying child and left her to seek him out. He sought the Lord. He chose to seek the Lord first, and his child was healed. Other people who chose and weighed one unwisely. David slept with Ria's wife. Then he had him murdered to cover it up. He chose wickedness. Esau traded his birthright for a meal. Birth choice. He just chose to do that in Genesis chapter 27 verse 34. Pilate ignored the pleading of his wife about Jesus' innocence in Matthew 27. Unwise choices do not stop God from loving us. Have you chosen unwise? God is forgiving. He will save you. He will continue to work with us in his kingdom. Therefore, as I wind up, I want to say, I don't care what mess in your past you've done about choices. God is not done with you. Never lose hope. Choose wisely to grow in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word that there is power in choice. Help us to choose life and not death. By serving you, oh God, because you are faithful. Everyone who is there 
and he chose unwisely, Lord. I pray that you shall help him or her. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give God a mighty hand clap.